Dear learners, I am Dr. Sundravali. I am here to introduce the module on breast versus bottle feeding. The human baby, like other offsprings of other mammals, is born with the ready-made food supply of its own and therefore breastfeeding is natural and instinctive. The milk of different animals is uniquely specific and its composition is adapted to the needs of the baby. The infant should be put on the breast within half an hour after normal delivery and within four hours after caesarean section. Pre-lacteal foods like honey, distilled water or glucose should not be given. Breastfeeding can be initiated even the mother is sedated or on IV fluids. Sucking reflex is most active at birth. Exclusive breastfeeding is advised for first six months. It is inevitable and thereafter baby can be breastfed until the second year of life along with the supplementary foods. With this brief introduction, we move on to the objectives of this module. In this module, the learner will be able to understand the importance and benefits of lactation, the physiology of lactation, the art and techniques of breastfeeding, the reason for the top feeding that is bottle feeding, government policy to encourage breastfeeding and discourage top or the bottle feeding. The learner will wonder why the importance and advantages is being stated in the beginning because this should be emphasized. Importance and advantages of breast milk. First, for the babies, how it is important. The breast milk is free from contamination and adulteration, is available at the desired temperature and easily digestible and suited to the needs of the infant. By virtue of anti-infective properties and freedom from contamination, the breastfed babies have a low incidence of infective diarrhea, respiratory infection, necrotinizing entocolitis and mortality. There is reduced risks of eczema and milk allergy in breastfed babies. There is less evidence to suggest that breastfed babies are less likely to develop obesity, hypertension and atherosclerosis in later life. Now for the mother. Lactational amenorrhea often associated with breastfeeding partly helps in spacing the birth of babies and in conservation of maternal iron. It ensures better involution of genitals and offers some protection to the mother against breast cancer. Breastfeeding helps the mother to deplete the fat reserves that are gained during pregnancy. Now, for the both the mother and the baby, how it helps. Breastfeeding fosters a close physical and emotional contact of the child with the mother. It gives satisfaction to the mother and generates a feeling of importance, indispensability and motherliness. For the family and the nation, breast milk is apparently free of cost. Though the lactating mother needs additional 550 kilocalories per day to maintain lactation and her own health. The economic benefits of breastfeeding to a developing country are obvious considering that in India alone, about 22 million nursing mothers produce on an average about 3.7 million tons of 
milk annually. Now we will move on to the immunobiology of breast milk. Human milk is not only best suited and specific for nutritional needs, it also boosts the host defenses of the newborn. It is replete with immunoglobulins, cellular elements and non-specific humoral protective factors. Breast milk contains large quantity of immunoglobin A and immunoglobin M antibodies which are not otherwise available to newborn baby because they do not cross the placenta. Some immunoglobin G are also present in breast milk. The highest concentration of P3 IgA is found in cholesterol. Quantitative and qualitative differences of antibiotics exist in serum and breast milk. The immunoglobulins present in breast milk represents surface or secretory antibody which work at mucosal sites in the intestinal tract. The high concentration of antibodies present in cholesterol drop sharply after few days. So the child should not be denied of cholesterol which is highly nutritious and protective. Human milk also contains non-specific humoral factors such as lysozyme, lactoferrin and lactoperoxidase. Macrophages and lymphocytes make up to 90 and 10 percent respectively with equal distribution of B and T cells. Macrophages provide defense mechanisms against the pathogens. Now we will see about macrophages. Human milk contains macrophages. They contribute immunity in two ways. One, they engulf T cells and digest the bacteria and two, the bacteria and virus responsible for diseases such as poliomyelitis, influenza and diphtheria can be destroyed by this way. Now we will see about lymphocytes. They are responsible for transfer of immunological memory. T lymphocytes may offer some protection against malaria. Lymphocytes also produce an antiviral substance called interferon. These cells in breast milk may therefore play an important role in the infant's transition from passive to active immunity. Breastfed babies also been shown to have reduced risk of lymphorecticular malignancy in later life. Infants with a strong family history of allergic diseases benefit from this protection particularly through extended breastfeeding. Human milk also contains IgG and IgM immunoglobin but a much lower than that of IgA. Infants make relatively low level of its own IgA immunoglobin and high levels of its own IgG and IgM immunoglobin are resistant to the acidity of the stomach. Research indicates that breastfeeding must be maintained until the infant is at least 3 months of age in order to get this protection. Lactoferrin and vitamin B12 binding proteins. Lactoferrin is an iron containing protein found both in cholesterol and in mature milk. It inhibits the growth of staphylococcus organism and E. coli by iron that is needed for growth. If excess of iron is provided in the diet, the infant is susceptible for infection. 
Similarly, vitamin B12 binding protein present in breast milk makes vitamin B12 unavailable to pathogens that require B12 to survive in the infant's gastrointestinal tract. Lactobacillus bifidus factus. This is present in human milk in a concentration of 40 times greater than cow's milk. It is an amino sugar and contains N-acetyl neuroaminic acid which encourages the growth of microorganisms lactobacillus bifidus and produces acetic or lactic acid from lactose and depresses the growth of pathogenic or disease producing organisms like Escherichia coli or E. coli. Growth of lactobacillus bifidus is enhanced on a high lactose and low protein diet. Lactose protein ratio in human milk is 7 is to 1 compared to cow's milk in which it is 4 is to 1. Breast milk supplies enzymes like amylase, lipoprotein lipase, bile salt stimulated lipases oxidases, lactoperoxidase and leukocyte myeloperoxidase. These enzymes increase digestibility and also act as defense against microbes. Lipases kill bacteria. Fatty acids and monoglyceridase. These are present in human milk and are able to penetrate the membrane of viruses and bacteria and destroy them. They contribute for passive immunity and provide protection without the use of medicines or vaccines. Paraaminobenzoic acid is absolutely essential for erythrocytic stages of malaria, parasite, lack of PABA in human milk inhibits malaria. Now we will move on to the physiology of lactation. The production of milk is an interaction between hormones and reflexes. First, we will see the production of milk. Prolactin, a hormone produced by the anterior pituitary, stimulates tissues of breast to produce milk. When the baby start sucking, the nerve ending in the nipple carry messages to the anterior pituitary which in turn releases prolactin in the blood. The more the baby sucks, greater is the stimulus for the milk production. Another important point to be noted here is the earlier the baby is put to the breast, sooner the reflex will be initiated. The greater is the demand of milk, more milk is produced. Secondly, the release or the ejection of milk. This is facilitated by letdown reflex which is mediated by through release of oxytocin from posterior pituitary. Oxytocin is released by the stimulation of the nerve ending in the nipple. This is facilitated by sucking, thought, sigh, smell or sound of the baby. The letdown reflex is affected by mother's emotions. A relaxed, comfortable and tension free atmosphere helps this milk ejection reflex. On the other hand, if the mother is tensed, worried, apprehensive, pain and discomfort during breastfeeding hinders the milk flow. Complete emptying of breast during each feed is associated with enhanced milk production. Hence, for the successful establishment of lactation, 
the prerequisites for the nursing mother are self-confidence, freedom from anxiety and vigorous sucking by an infant. Certain medications like estrogen, bromocryptine, thiazides and pyridoxin are known to suppress lactation. The administration of chlorpromomycin and metochlorpromide to a lactating mother had shown to increase milk production. Now we will see the different types of breast milk. The composition of breast milk varies at different stages of lactation to suit the needs of the baby. Milk of a mother of a preterm baby is different from a full term baby. Therefore, the milk is not species specific. It is baby specific. Cholesterol during the first two or three days of delivery, thick and yellowish fluid is secreted from the mammary gland. This differs from the regular milk. It is secreted in small quantity of about 10 to 40 ml. It is rich in protein. The total fat content of cholesterol is less than mature milk. Concentration of arachidonic acid and docosa hexanoic acid is higher in cholesterol than mature milk. Zinc content in cholesterol is 20 mg per liter, whereas mature milk has 2.6 mg per liter. The composition of cholesterol is given in the table. Cholesterol contains large quantity of protective substances and enhances the development and maturation of the baby's gastrointestinal tract. Cholesterol helps a baby pass her first stool. It should be never discarded. Transition milk. During the next two weeks, the milk increase in quantity and changes in appearance and composition. This is called as the transition milk. The immunoglobin and protein content decreases while the fat and sugar content increases. Exclusive breastfeeding of cholesterol and transition milk minimizes infection related to neonatal deaths. Mature milk. It is followed by the transitional milk. It is thinner and watery but contains all the nutrients essential for the growth of the baby. Four milk. The milk that comes at the start of a feed is called four milk. Four milk, which is very watery, has a low level of fat and high in lactose, protein, vitamins, minerals and water. It satisfies the baby's thirst. Hind milk. The milk which comes later in a feed is richer in fat. It satisfies the baby's hunger and supplies more energy than four milk. Babies who are fed four and hind milk sleep well and grow healthy. For optimum growth, the baby needs four milk and the hen milk. The baby should be allowed to empty completely one breast first before being put on to the other breast. Preterm milk. The milk of a mother of a preterm baby contains more calories, higher concentration of fat, protein and sodium which are needed by a preterm baby. The concentration of lactose calcium and phosphorus are lesser than the term baby's mother's milk. The composition of milk also varies during the phase of feeding. Now we will move on to the preparation for breastfeeding. How 
a mother should be prepared for breastfeeding the infant. The motivation and preparation of breastfeeding should start during antenatal visits or checkups. The cleaning of nipples, their reversion if retarded, must be initiated well in advance so that the baby will not face any mechanical difficulties. This helps in building a cordial relationship between mother and child during early nursing and reduces the incidence of failure of lactation. Establishment of lactation. Lactation is an exciting exercise for the mother. It needs a lot of support from the family members. Few women may fail to establish satisfactory lactation due to constitutional or genetic reasons. But the condition is uncommon. Malnutrition significantly does not affect the process of lactation, but fat, vitamins and minerals may be deficient in the milk produced. During lactation, especially before and after lactating, mother should drink plenty of liquids. Additional foods which are rich in nutrients should be given. There are some foods called galactogogus which are supposed to increase the secretion of milk. Example, garlic, ginger, coconut, jaggery, gingerly oil, dry fish, chicken, dry fruits and nuts. Schedule are and art of feeding. The feed for the baby should be a semi-demand feeding. Babies should be fed for every two to three hours. The mother should sit comfortably and hold the infant in her hand slightly with the raised head close to the breast. With the other hand using her index and middle finger, she should help the baby to hold the nipple comfortably to establish the rooting reflex. Please see to the figure. For effective sucking, the baby should hold the nipple and areola to eject the milk from the lacteal sinuses. During the first week, most of the babies fall asleep during feeding. The mother should slightly tickle the baby in the sole or the earlobe. When the baby is not sucking, the mother should slightly try to remove the nipple from the mouth. During this action, the baby gets alert and starts sucking with the vigor. Most babies suck for 15 to 20 minutes to take an adequate feed and are satisfied with one breast. Alternative breasts should be offered first at every other feed. If the baby takes adequate milk, he is satisfied at least for two hours. The mother sh must learn the art of burping the baby after each feed to avoid regurgitation. Please note the figure. In the early months, babies should not be allowed for long hours of sleep. After two or three hours, the mother should wake the baby and feed. After three or four months, if the infant is fed late night before going to sleep around 11 p.m., then next feed can be given around 5 a.m. But the schedule of feeding is not the same for all the babies. Careful planning and patience should be established in handling the infant. Table given here gives the recommendations for promotion of successful breastfeeding. Education and advice must be given to every mother during the 
antenatal visits. Sore and cracked nipples must be treated before delivery. The first feed to the infant should be breast milk, that is colostrum. Breastfeeding should be established during the first hour of life. The baby should be held in the right, correct position. Mother can feed in any position which is comfortable for both baby and the mother. Rooming in is a must for successful lactation. Baby should be fed on demand, not by clock. Bottle feeding is not recommended. Exclusive breastfeeding for 6 months is a must. Breastfed babies does not require additional water. Frequent suckling, correct positioning, complete emptying of the breast, feeding with alternative breasts and supportive care are the pillars of the successful lactation. Common feeding problems. Primary gravida mother problems. The primary gravida mother may face initial difficulties due to anxiety, worry and lack of confidence. The poor milk output first two or three days may aggravate the problem. Mechanical difficulties. The mechanical difficulties may occur in certain neonatal conditions such as cleft palate, macroglossia, thrush and uncoordinated suckling and swallowing of premature babies. Abnormalities such as retracted or cracked nipples and engorgement of breast interfere with satisfactory feeding. Engorged breast. After the third day of delivery, some mothers get engorgement of breast. They become heavy, swollen, hard and painful. This may lead to infection, formation of breast abscess and lactational failure. This can be prevented by early feeding of the baby and frequent suckling. The milk must be expressed and collected in a sterile container if the engorgement continues. A normal healthy baby may be put on to the breast after expressing the milk to relieve engorgement. Regurgitation. Most babies regurgitate some feeds but they continue to gain weight satisfactorily. The mother should be advised to put the baby onto the shoulder to help him or her to erect the swallowed air. After this, the baby should be put to bed in the right lateral position with head slightly raised. Alterations of bowel movements. The breastfed babies tend to pass semi-loose golden yellow sticky stools due to high lactose content. Baby on formula or cow's milk tend to constipate due to formation of casein curds. Mastitis. It is an infection caused by the bacteria. This may cause swelling, heat and pain usually in just one breast or part of the breast. The nursing mother may feel feverish and ill. It should be brought to the notice of the doctor and he will prescribe an antibiotic which will not harm the baby. The mother must not stop feeding the baby. Definitely, the bacteria will not be present in the milk and the antibiotics the mother is taking will protect the baby. Next, 
emptying of the breast also will help the mother to have less or no pain. Till now we have seen about the goodness of the breast milk and the breast feeding. Now we will move on to the bottle feeding. If the mother is hale and healthy, she can exclusively breastfeed the baby at least for four months after which the complementary and supplementary foods can be introduced and wean the baby. At least for one year the breast milk should not be stopped. So along with the other foods the baby should be fed with breast milk. When and why bottle feeding should be introduced? One of the commonest reason mothers give up breastfeeding or supplement their milk with breast milk substitute is because there is low production and thinks that they do not have sufficient milk and lack in producing the same. Very rarely mother is physiologically unable to produce enough milk. Delayed start, infrequent feeds, no night feeds, poor attachment, bottle feeding pacifiers, complementary feeds, lack of confidence, worry, stress, dislike of breastfeeding, rejection of baby are some of the reasons for low milk production. Factors like lack of suitable information in appropriate health practices, biased health professionals and aggressive promotion of milk substitutes discourage feeding. Accurate knowledge, a supportive environment and confidence are major factors which enable the mother to lactate and breastfeed successfully. Though no milk can substitute for mother's milk, sometimes it is necessary to give artificial feeding at certain circumstances. They are as follows. The mother suffering from serious illness, another pregnancy intervenes during lactation, inability to suck the breast by the child because of hair lip or cleft palate, insufficient milk supply to the child, mother is not available to feed the child due to her job or career, the mother is on anticoagulants or steroids and radioactive drug, death of the mother. These may be some of the reasons. What to choose, cow's milk or formula milk for top feeding or bottle feeding? In a developing country like India, cow's milk is easily available and economical than the formula milk. The undiluted cow's milk or 3 is to 1 diluted buffalo milk are quite satisfactory. The next economical product is dry milk powder. Apart from this, the infant formulas based on cow's milk or soy milk are available in the market. The infant formulas are available according to the age of the baby and the instructions are clearly given to prepare the formula. This top feed can be given to the baby with the help of the bottle or cup or spoon. Since the top feed is given using an external source, care should be taken to sterilize the vessels and bottle before giving the feed. If milk is left over in the bottle, it should be discarded or taken by the adult. During the first week of life, only 30 to 40 ml should be given to the infant per feed. 
if the baby completes fully then an additional 15 ml could be increased from the following feed underfeeding and overfeeding the infant overfeeding is uh, uncommon in the newborn period but underfeeding and starvation is dangerous for the babies due to feeding the babies with diluted milk many a time the dilution of milk is purely due to economical conditions the best guide to sufficient or adequate feeding is weight gain of by the baby infa milk substitute act 1992 this act amended in 2003 was passed to protect promote and support breastfeeding the salient features of this act are there should be no promotion of infant feeding products in healthcare facilities booklets leaflets brochures etc and similar materials which advertise infant feeding products should not be permitted artificial feeding should be the exception exception and not a rule bans financial inducement to any person commission in sales to employees gifts and samples to healthcare workers at the end of this module i would like to summarize dear learners exclusive breastfeeding for the first 6 months is impeccable preparing the mother for the lactation and the psychological and emotional support by the healthcare workers and the family members is inevitable the artificial feeding should be introduced only during emergency and the inability by the mother to feed or the infant to suck august first week is celebrated as the world breastfeeding week which aims at spreading the awareness of breastfeeding breast milk is the best milk learners after going through this module be the messengers of spreading the importance of breastfeeding and breast milk thank you